hey guys good evening and thanks for joining yeah i think so many people are asking me couple of videos are deleted 1 2 3 4 5 am i right yes sir yeah so i only asked the ganesh to delete all those videos why because uh, already you can see are you able to see my screen yes so by default google is giving 115 gb as a google drive storage with free of cost so already 13.85 is already occupied and also yesterday classes i have to upload and today classes also i have to upload that's why i told him to delete the couple of demo classes so first one uh, first class is demo class next one i think second one third one fourth one also all those are definitions only so whatever osl is are from there it is repeated is it clear yes sir yeah so those are all basics only and also all those things it is available in the excel sheet so demo class remaining definitions like what is data center what is active directory what is different types of protocols okay all those it is a part of definitions acronyms so all those acronyms are already covered it's a part of all these classes right so this <clears throat> sorry <clears throat> so from sixth i mean sixth video onwards our main classes will start is it clear yes sir yeah so that's why it is deleted guys Sir, where is Excel sheet, sir? Excel sheet, our day-to-day -day basis cybersecurity material. So this is our material. All those things it is available in this material, cybersecurity. Okay, sir. Yeah. Hope it is clear to everyone. Okay, we'll continue. So, okay, where wherever we stop morning. So I think Aju Pasha is already shared another pre-existing. already who ever is attended the inter equations those things we are going to discuss i think this one did we discuss this one if we given you cannot no sir no no, no. no we didn't do it yeah okay is it visible to you guys perfect sir yeah so first question this one as i said this one is uh, attended by kafur as well as uh, ajam so they put more than 10 plus 10 plus years of experience so then it will little bit complicated and also we can see maybe who are is putting 0 to 4 plus years of experience those inter equations as well okay let's start now if we have been given chance to configure the brute force attack role so what should be the number of attempts and what is the time frame alert should be triggered what the answer morning we discussed already five at the time of correlation yes that's right so as per my password policy whatever we are following in my organization level so five attempts with one minute one minute time period so that is the logic we will configure in the sim tool even you can say 10 minutes in one time one minute or two minutes okay so that is the answer right threshold guys when you say threshold maximum number of attempts so any ordination can access not any ordination as per ordination to ordination it will vary so example in this scenario what is the answer so five times in one minute time period okay second question i am an hr person i call you to my cabin okay yes showed you and some message is popping up to the desktop asking me to pay some amount then only the encryption will be happen so that what exactly is happening which attack is this which attack is this guys ransomware ransomware, ransomware. Attack. yeah ransomware attack so first question answer is ransomware attack there is no network there is no network nothing not even an open source tools option so what is the scenario here what are all these steps that you will follow what will you do after that so there is no network nothing so not even an open source tools option so what is the scenario here what are all the steps that you will follow what you will follow after that 
so example right now i'm sharing my screen to you it is popping something so it is showing that the attacker is asking some of the payment as a ransom obviously it is a ransomware attack so now next step what will you do next step what will you do sir uh, uh, we already know that uh, which system is already compromised so that uh, we can keep the system in isolation okay. so then uh, we will verify that IP address, uh, which IP address is uh, contacting with the system. Okay. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. That's correct only. Go ahead. Yeah. In the firewall and proxy, uh, you can check it and we can block this uh, IP addresses. So, which is incoming IP address. So, this mm. uh, after that, uh, you can clean this uh, system, which is got compromised. Mm. What cleaning will do? The, uh, what are the malware is uh, uh, installed? Okay, so then in case that particular file is already encrypted, file is already encrypted. Backup. Yeah, so we have to do yeah. the entire formatting of the system and we have to speak with the help desk team or corporate IT team. So is there any backup configuration is available? Then we have to import the backup configuration, whatever ready-made laptop is available already already maybe whatever formatted system is there we have to import that backup configuration so already we discussed this attack it's a ransomware investigation indirectly okay so next one so we used we use dmz zone why do we use this why do we need it anyone it is a bridge or a exact uh... Networking uh, security from external to internal, sir. Yes. And so DMZ, reason, we will. Mm, okay, yeah, carry yeah. on. Carry no, on. You, that's it. You, you. Yeah, DMZ is full form is demilitarized zone. It will act as a okay. So gateway or bridge between trusted network to untrusted network. So it will normally non-critical server, non-critical facing applications. We can deploy in the DMZ zone. So why do we need it? So this one is required whenever any external attacker is hacking, this one will act as a bridge. That is DMZ, it's like a boundary guys, boundary between our trusted network to the untrusted network. So take example in between Pakistan and India border. So water border is there. So that is nothing but DMZ zone only. So why that border is required? So to make sure that whenever any Pakistani people are entering to the so Indians, so our Navy Army people, they will make sure that protection of the Indian border. So same thing is applicable here as well. So DM zone will act as a bridge or border between the trusted network of the ordination to the untrusted network of the attackers. So that's why you use this DMZ zone. Okay. So what are non-critical servers or non-critical applications are there? So those things we will deploy in this DMZ zone. Okay. So that is the answer for third one. So this DMZ or DMZ what came from military. Okay, this what came from military. So next one, what is the normal switching time frame? One link to another link that goes down. What is normal switching time from one Machine to another machine. What is mean indirectly this question? Anyone? What is the normal switching time from one link to another link that goes down? What is Sar this server to anyone? server? High availability. High availability, yeah. Yeah. It's a high availability times case. So what is the percentage we discussed? Availability issue. Availability. What is the percentage we have to see? Availability percentage, guys. 90. Out of 100%, 90? 100, 100. 99.59. 99.99999. 99. 99. So then what is the percentage of the time it is required? 10 milliseconds, less than 10 milliseconds. Less than 10 milliseconds or 1 millisecond. So switching, switching time is less than 1 millisecond, you can say the answer. Immediately, as per heartbeat messages, hollow messages between active and backup or primary and backup or master and slave 
is a less than one millisecond. You can say answer is one milliseconds, not in fifty milliseconds. One millisecond, you can say. Immediately switch over, it will happen. So you should understand, guys. One link to another link meaning here. So between two devices, between two clusters. Okay, it's the same configuration. Indirectly, they are speaking about high availability. Is it clear or not? So 99.99999 as per ISACA, as per security best practices, as per European Council. Okay, it is 99.59. That is the percentage. So now 100% minus 99.99999. How much it will come? So less than one millisecond. Okay, that is the fifth one. Sorry, fourth one. Fourth. When you have risk score, yeah. When you have risk score, sorry, guys, some internet issue. When you have, when you say risk score or device or a user, how will you derive it? On what basis in your drive for it? Anyone? Risk score. Risk score. What is the formula? Risk score. Anomaly factor into uh, event allocation, event occurrence. Anomaly factor into uh, incident occurrence. Incident type. Yeah. Incident type. What is anomaly, anomaly factor now? Definition. What is anomaly factor? Anomaly factor definition. At the time, Uba, we discussed all these. Examine tool as well. Uba, we discussed at the time, Uba. Anomaly factor definition. Total number of uh, the answer? total number of abnormal events by total yes. number of events. Yes. What is the total number of events here? Logs. Yeah. Total number of normal plus abnormal events. Okay. Anomaly. So risk score equivalent to. Okay. So anomaly factor into type of instant. So when you say type of instant, type of attack. So now anomaly factor equal to once again, total number of abnormal events, nothing but malicious related events by total number of events, total number of events equivalent to total number of normal events plus total number of abnormal events. If you are multiplying anomaly factor into type of instant category, so then we'll get the respective risk score. That is the answer. Okay. So next one, you have eight subnets and are one subnet collecting logs from on-premise log source and the other subnets are collecting logs from the cloud services or your cloud subscription everything is collected on the one sim server then you received an email from the cisco team is stating that they have been high traffic from external to internal or internal to external but they are unable to identify which IP it is, but they have got some alert. For some reason, your Q radar is down, is not generating any alert, nothing. As an alternative, what will you do? Check the IP is causing so much of traffic. What are the possibilities that you check why SIM is not generating any alerts? So what will you do in this scenario? So here they are saying that Two subnets are there. One subnet is for on premise, and second subnet is for the cloud logs integration. Okay, so unfortunately, the SM server is down, and there are a lot of flooding of the traffic is coming. Okay, in that scenario, if you want to verify through which IP that particular flooding of the traffic is coming, so what will you do in this scenario? If SM tool is not giving any alert notification, what the alternative we can go and we can identify, guys? Firewall. Sir. Firewall and one more. One mm. more. Main thing. One more. NADS and NAPS. Perfect. IDS, IPS. So, whenever any abnormal or malicious or suspicious pattern of the behavior of the traffic is happening, so baseline method is one of the options is available. Peaks of the traffic. So, if the SM tool is done, obviously. Network IDS or network IPS tool will generate the alert notification. So once that alert notification is triggering as per network IDS and network IPS, then I will go and I will check the which IP is causing the issue. 
So if SM tool is not available also, then as per firewall or as per network IDS, network IPS, I will go and I will take care of the instant investigation. I will identify through which IP these flooding of the traffic is coming. I will go and I will check the reputation of the IP address. After that, I'll block those IP address in the firewall level. So that is the answer. So indirectly what they're expecting from you. So are you aware of internet facing related tools or not other than cyber security SIM tool? So internet facing tool, obviously firewall after that proxy, after that network IDS, network IPS. Whenever any inbound traffic and outbound traffic related tools, if you want to use one is network IDS, network IPS or second one is firewall. <clears throat> Proxies mainly for the application access. Okay. Answer is IDS IPS. I will go and I will monitor and I will check the what is the status of the flooding of the malicious of the traffic it is coming. Or firewall also one of the things we can go and we can see. So that is the answer, guys. Firewall and also network IDS, network IPS. Already in case if we have in parallel to ISP router anti-DOS and anti-DDoS tools we are using. Even we can go and we can check in the anti DOS and anti DDoS tools as well. Okay. So, whether you are aware of all these three different types of solutions or not. So, that's what they're expecting from you. It's not about cyber security SOC operations. Okay. Next one. How sir, will you write? Yes. Sir. Yes, please. Uh, subnet masking is different uh, from the uh, question, sir. Subnet masking, they are not expecting. There are indirectly they want to confuse you. Two subnets are there. One subnet is they are asking for the on premise logs integration. Second subnet for the cloud related traffic. One subnet is related to on premises related traffic. So, second subnet is related to cloud traffic. So, we have defined server LAN, end user LAN, network LAN in the network architecture diagram. Did you remember? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, He's same okay. concept here as well. Yeah. And he is asking about uh, the remedy and the solution finding to logs missing per SIM tool also, right? Yeah. So SIM tool, that's why we have to implement which option. If QRADAR is going down, what is the option we have to implement? Deep packet inspection. Yeah, that is okay. Packet Other than this one. No, that is okay. Fine. No, no. Second but, question is asking what are the possibilities that you check why SIM is not generating alerts? Yeah, so that's why we have to implement always high availability option as well. Okay. So high availability option that is recommendation. Recommendation is always we have to use a high availability in the IBM QRADAR network architecture diagram. When we discussed, I told I shown mesh topology. Did you remember mesh topology? Yes, yes. Two, two, yeah. equivalent SM tool. Yeah. So everywhere. So on the ESM level, even sorry, even processor flow processor. And also even collector for local everywhere we have to apply mesh topology. In case if you are using mesh topology, obviously this type of scenarios we can remedy it. Okay, if even one sim tool is going down, second sim tool will come into picture. Even one even process is going down, second even process will come into picture. So there are completely mesh topology. Remediation is completely mesh topology we have to apply with the active and backup related. So high availability. Is it clear or not? Yes, sir. Perfect. Yeah. Next one. How will you write a correlation rule? Not how will you create what? How will you write a correlation rule? Not how will you create? Just this is question. I think my opinion, how will you create a correlation rule? How will you create a correlation rule? So you, you can prepare one of the use case as I said morning also. So just you can give the answer. So we have to log into the IBM QRADAR example. We have to go to the offenses tab. We have to click on the rules button. And we have to go to the, okay. So we have to choose the building blocks after clicking on the next widget. Then we have to choose the logic. So building blocks logic, which type of category and also Boolean algebra function. And after that, we have to define the category. Then we have to click on the next button. Then we have to specify the rule action. So relevance, credibility, severity. Okay. So then finally, a rule response as a email notification socket the rate of so and so domain. After creating this particular correlation rule, 
I will test in the testing environment. If everything is successful, then I will raise a change request. I will implement in the prod environment. So morning we discussed one correlation rule. You can prepare and you can explain. So that is about seventh one. In logarithm, whenever any instant is triggered, let's say any brute force that you did not get much details, how will you analyze it? How will you analyze it? So they are maybe this interview he went for logarithm. So I think as you he mentioned IBM QR radar in his resume. In logarithm, one of the instant is received. They are looking for logarithm, I think so. Yeah, so brute force attack related. So logs are generated. Unfortunately, the talent doesn't have the full fledged information. What will you do, guys? What will you do? If you don't have the full pledged parsed log, what will you do? We'll go for the raw log. Yeah, we'll go to the raw log. We will go to the end user machine, then we'll go to the respective end user machine. What is the log source, first of all? So, what is the log source in this scenario? What is the log source for brute force attack? Main log source? Uh, Active Directory. Active Directory domain controller, that's correct. Domain control. Yes. So we can go and we can speak with the domain control team, ask them to provide so on to timestamp, when the timestamp it is happened. So we can speak with the Windows admin guy or system admin guy. So for that particular end user mission, for that particular time period, so what are the logs are generated? Could you please provide the raw logs to me? So otherwise we can go one, one more option. Directly we can go to the end user machine. So we can ask them to share his screen and we can go and we can analyze. So which times from that event we were, we can go and we can see what happened. Okay. So that is about eighth one. So we, in this one coordination is required guys. Coordination with either Windows admin or sys admin team, part of active director and domain controller or maybe directly end user. So most of the case first you can give priority to Windows admin or sys admin team as compared to end user. End user is last chance. Okay, sometimes parsing issues will come. Indirectly, they are asking about, so whether you are aware of the parsing issues or not. So we have to analyze in this thing are raw logs, wherever the original logs are generated. Okay. As a suspicious email is clicked by the user, one instant risk is triggered. How you analyze this one? What is the use case for this one? Which is the use case we discussed? Phishing. Phishing with, with parameters. Phishing with url yes malicious url link phishing with malicious url link. yes only one user not multiple users also so you have to explain the false positive scenario you have to explain the true positive scenario okay in case the end user is clicked on the malicious url link either proxy or firewall is blocking it is like a false positive in case if it is not blocking then we have to think like a true, true positive and we have to analyze Domain validation, IP address validation, header analyzer, finally, URL validation as well. Okay. So that's what they're expecting. Indirectly, what is the scenario for this one? Malicious URL with malicious URL phishing email attachment. Okay. Single user, not multiple users. Is it clear, eighth one, ninth one? Ninth one is clear or not? Yes. Yeah. So, tenth one multiple failed logins followed by a successful login multiple logins followed by a successful log. this situation what all things need to be added in the query to populate the role any example you can take and explain indirectly what type of attack is this one brute force brute force attack is false first or true positive true positive true positive true that's positive. correct true, true positive so at the time of giving a query, so what all the information you will give a right a query example using SQL query or uh, Splunk programming language. So what are the queries you will get to give the more explanation? Did not understand the question, sir. Sorry. You can read multiple failed logins. What is the event ID? 4625. 4625. And by successful login. What is the four, event ID? Yes. So that is the query we have to give in the correlation rule. Indirectly, they are expecting whether you are aware of 
so event id 4625 and event id 4624 or not so that is the query will create a logic that is the query we will give okay wherever the alert is received query is so host name equal to and ip address equal to and event id so and so 4625 and event id 4625 so that that particular enter information of the end user we will get it in the rule they are expecting basically so indirectly boolean algebra function 4625 and 4624 bb category authentication failures and event id equal to 4625 and event id equal to 4624 and ip address equal to example 10.10.10.1 and host name equal to so and so so that is what indirectly what they are expecting in this scenario whether you are aware of event id 4625 and event id 4624 or not is it clear or not indirectly they are asking this question to you clear or not this is clear sir yeah contain one organization with 1000 servers that are facing one attack after you will join how you mitigate consider i think consider one organization with 1000 servers that are facing one attack after you will join what how can you mitigate indirectly these type of attacks most of the cases like a phishing email so phishing email attacker will use a recon and he will use a lateral movement so from there he will compromise so you know need to this is combination with technical as well as managerial based so example yesterday i said right so thousand different phishing emails are coming per thousand different users okay in that sense how can you handle this situation same thing this is also so you joined recently in an organization and thousand servers got hacked in that scenario how can you handle the situation okay first of all you have to go and you have to see one server through which file file name file size file category and also attack ip address this particular attack is happened and go and see second server also go and see third server as well by grasping everything so for, for thousand servers also will happen same almost the same scenario probability wise you are blocking one server hash value automatically other servers also blocked it automatically so that's why samples you have to take for thousand servers are you getting or not are yes, you getting sir. yeah so one one take example maybe by grasping i mean by seeing so one server which file this particular okay alert is received or attack is happened second server through which file third server which file even along with attack ip address also after seeing three or four or five samples we can conclude that same attacker he sent a so and so file to multiple systems at a time that's why using lateral movement all these systems got hacked so finally you are blocking one hash value so that command and control completely will go away so even we have to take the ip address and we have to completely block so later we have to think about the infection cleaning ip address blocking hash value blocking we have to do later we have to delete all those from, from the respective end user machines or servers containment backup services there or not so these type of attacks will come most of the cases through phishing email attachments okay that is what on the 11th it is combination of both technical and managerial based so whether you are able to handle this situation or not even though you are a new person in the organization level it's not about how much technical you are guys first by seeing itself 1000 servers oh my god 1000 servers it is got compromised how can you handle this situation okay first one or two alerts we have to go and we have to see so after that we have to conclude so that is about 11th or combination of both technical and managerial based question otherwise you can give three or four servers to your employee i mean your neighbor colleague and three or four to another another employee and four or five to another employee finally you can make a brainstorming session what do you mean brainstorming in this one collectively oh. working together yeah collectively working together and making a summary so i found out this information i found this information i found this information so for all those information is same absolutely it will be same okay finally we can we have to make a summary that is about 11th one 
So this is what the Infosys interview question I told you, right? If 1,000 servers, 100 servers are got compromised, what will you do? Same thing, same question here also. Brief about NAST framework. Anyone? NAST framework. Why will you use NAST framework? For risk analysis majorly. Risk management, risk management framework. Perfect. Yes. Other than uh, this one? Five, uh, we have five processes in this. Incident life cycle. Yes. Uh, identity, yeah. protect, uh, detect, respond, and recovery. Yes. So that is so mainly for the cyber risk, cyber security framework. So which, which type of cyber security framework? Risk assessment or risk management. What is the IEEE number? IEEE standard number. Risk assessment. As per NAST framework, what is IEEE standard number? 800. 800-53. Okay. 800-53, guys. Risk assessment yes, framework. You told us before. Yeah. Okay, so that is the NAST framework, guys. Risk assessment as well as instant life cycle management. So these two are famous. Give me one second, only one second, guys. One second. Sorry, guys. So that is about NST framework, guys. Inst mainly risk assessment, it's very, very famous for the NST. Second one, instant recovery and response. So that is instant life cycle management framework. Okay. So these two are very famous related to NST. Next one, do you see IOC information on the firewall? Indicator of compromise in the firewall. Will you see or not? Or not. Indicators. Indicators. I guess 13 one I'm asking you, do you see IOS information on the firewall? Paul. Hello, am I audible? Yes, sir. I was, yes, we can see in the yes. firewall level. Yes, sir. Yes, we can see. Victim IP and also which mission, what computer is the server, name. computer name, where it is located. Yes, we can see. Yes, Action. answer is yes. Yeah, you, you can have to say everything, payload, all those. Do you know any threat intelligence feeds? Do you know any threat intelligence feeds? Yes, sir. Yes. Example? Uh, dark reading portal. Dark reading portal and open source portal name is? Open source naked security. No, no, no. Open source threat intelligence feeds is called as OS NIT. Uh, OS INT. INT, yeah. OS INT. Open source INT means intelligence. OS INT. What about IBM side? IBM, IBM side. Exports. IBM exports. What about McAfee side? McAfee. McAfee GTI. McAfee GTI, global threat intelligence. What about logarithm? Same logarithm GTS. Logarithm GTS. Plunk, Plunk GTA. So checkpoint, Palo Alto, crowd strike. So we have so many threat intelligence feeds, guys. And also we have to follow a couple of websites as well. Whatever. Okay, Kranti said that that's correct. So naked security, dark reading. Okay, CSO online, US set, India set. From there we will get okay, different types of threat intelligence feeds information. So if it is open source, OSINT. OS means open source, INT means intelligence. How do you check IOS information so for CDR tool? Where we can Al see I alerts tab. Yeah, alerts tab, that's correct. If you're clicking on alerts tab, then we can see the so IOS information related to victim related details. Who is going to impact that victim IP and so on? What is golden table attack or golden attack or golden ticket, not table? 
golden ticket attack what is golden ticket attack what is golden ticket attack we discussed already the attacker will gain access over the active directory yes naim pasha explain what is golden ticket attack the attacker will gain access over the attack directory yeah the active directory and later movement from Are the, you sure i mean i mean i used to, uh, by act, by hacking the user uh, account he will what is the service account name is called as what is the service account name is called as Sir, KR BTGT sir. What is KR BTGT full form? Kerberos ticket granting to uh, granting ticket. Excellent man, excellent. Yeah, so that's perfect answer, guys. So attacker or adversary gains control over Active Directory distribution service account. So once he will gain the distribution account, so from there he will gain the other user accounts as well. so that particular active directory kr btgt account name is called as kerberos okay ticket granting ticket service account so attacker will gain those service account username and password of the active directory from there he will gain the other user accounts as well that is called golden ticket how can you mitigate golden ticket attack cap gemini and mind tree entry question i told you already so 16th is cap gemini and mind tree entry question guys what is golden ticket what is silver ticket these two okay what is mitigation steps we have to use for the golden ticket strong password policies strong password policies we have to use that's correct and role what else based access control then what else role based access control what else that's correct what else multi factor authentications we need account to change the policy. default uh, default passwords are yes all these are mitigation right. right so default password we have to change okay multi factor authentication strong password policies account lockout policies okay even locks we have to integrate to sim tool when our any abnormal activities happen sim tool will give the alert notifications so that is golden ticket what is explain kerberos attack What is Kerberos attack also called as? Kerberos attack also called as golden ticket. No, no, no. Golden ticket is uh, indirectly they are asked golden ticket. Kerberos attack is called as silver ticket, guys. Silver ticket attacker will gain these session key related information. So Kerberos is a mutual authentication purpose we will use. so attacker will gain the local admin access to the active directory or computer from there he will gain the entire active directory access using ntlm authentication related to service key whatever we are using so service key is related to silver ticket so as i said kerberos mechanism it will use ticket granting server ticket granting key ticket granting client so these are the three different components are there so kerberos attack it's a combination of so silver ticket and also golden ticket both so same uh, same thing we have to pro attacker will gain the first local admin access to the computer from there he will gain the complete active directory access and also so part of even session key silver ticket as well so that is called kerberos attack both ticket granting server access ticket granting session key as well combination both golden plus silver So that is called Kerberos attack. Now, okay, in between client and server, so obviously mitigation steps are same as it is. So these two attacks are belongs to which one? These two attacks are belongs to which one? Active Directory, Active Directory. So that is about overall. So I think for one of the interview, okay, one of the interview they asked about these seventeen questions, guys. Okay, so in this one. okay so i can say fourth one may be little bit complicated why because you are not sure about one link to another link that word terminology one link to another link okay and maybe 
okay so sixth one as well because they brought subnet concept so by that time you'll get confusion subnet means what so sixth one then maybe uh tenth one also so maybe you'll think like correlation rule creation no but they are expecting about whether you are aware of the event ID 4624 and 4625 indirectly they ask about this question and also 11th one thousand servers these four are little bit thinking questions logically thinking questions remaining all are straight forward sir yes please uh all these are actually implementation level questions right where is implementation you are feeling i mean uh yes yes are... yeah so this is not uh, not like implementation they are testing your capability like l3 level more okay. than l3 level yes you are right more than l3 level they are expecting you guys yeah for one to three experience also we can expect like indirect questions like for this. one two three yes yes because directly the, if you'll ask anyone they will explain right so indirectly only they will ask most of the questions you know the answer but you don't know the terminology morning also we have seen email authentication methods so if you'll ask the questions like what all every email contains important parameters or features then you will give the answer then you will say like it email authentication methods where's our discussed about email authentication methods did we discuss in the class so that's what you will think so email authentication methods also another name for the email features every email contain the features okay so yeah so you know the answer but they will ask in the different way that is the only difference but you have to understand is it clear yes sir yeah so that is about one of the interview next one okay what is risk management that you do in true positive situations what is risk management you do in true positive situations anyone true positive situations what will you do risk management what you will analyze risk management side risk score risk management what is mean by risk management i told you all that don't think about only security point of view even we have to think about something else what is that business sir yes business how much business it is going to lose because of this particular condition business impact analysis and risk management or risk assessment i told you did you remember yes sir yeah true past to situations how much financial value we are going to lose example one of the server is got compromised ransomware attack if you don't have so backup configuration file or high availability server so obviously we will lose the confidential data or otherwise we have to pay money right if you want to retrieve the key from the attacker or hacker related to ransomware that is one of the scenario i am giving so what is the risk management that you do in the true positive scenarios so based on the so financial impact and also what level of the confidential data breach it is going to happen and what is related to outage availability issue as per cia triad not only just availability confidentiality and integrity as well so these are all the different types of management related to risk i will evaluate okay one is outage second one is service impact third one is availability issue fourth one is data breach or data exfiltration okay fifth one financial impact so these are all the different types of risk management or risk assessment i will do is it clear or not indirectly business impact analysis guys how much business it is going to impact related to money value related to, to data related to confidentiality related to non repudiation and so on that's why i told you already so security analyst doesn't mean that we have to think about only security even we have to think about okay so business impact analysis as well financial impact also 
availability as well, outage also, data exfiltration, confidentiality, reputation of the company. Okay. Is it clear or not? First one. Yeah. Okay. Next one. You don't have antivirus or SIM tool or EDR tool. What do you do? Okay. Do you have any options in the system or else any other alternative? You don't have antivirus, SIM or EDR. What do you do? Do you have any options in this system or else any other alternatives? Okay. If you don't have any automated tools, so obviously, which process we have to follow? Manual verification. Manual verification. That manual verification, how will come to know? Even here. Even here. No, who will give complaint to us? So in this scenario, you can ask back interviewer guys. Question itself, it's not clear. So are he expecting about only antivirus and SIM EDR tools? Or else he does, I mean, firewall, proxy, network ideas, or any other security tools as well. Okay. So question itself, it's not clear. If I am the interview guy, I am attending the interview. I'll ask that. What is mean by exactly? So this question. I did not clear itself, right? So are he expecting only antivirus and SIM tool and EDR? Or he is saying that any other security tools also? So in case all the security tools are not existing, any security solutions are not existing, what is that field site we can call it as? There is no security solutions Greenfield. at all. Green. Perfect. Greenfield. Perfect. Okay. So it's a green field. It's a green field. So yesterday I attended for myself one of the interview. So in that interview also, he asked the same question. If it is a green field site after joining in company, what will you do first thing? So what we'll do on the endpoint level, we'll implement these are all the things. On the network level, we'll implement these are all the solutions. On the cyber security side, we'll implement these are all the things. On the server scan, we'll implement these are all the things. On the cloud security side, we'll implement cloud security solutions. Okay. So everywhere we have to consider on the information security side, we'll implement strategies, objectives, goals, policies, compliances, GRC. Everything we have to consider, 360 degrees of the security we have to think. So in this scenario, maybe is thinking a completely greenfield site. So then I will implement all those solutions. If he's expecting in the manual way of how can you do the instant investigation, obviously. So someone has to report to us. My system is not performing well. How you'll come to know so and so into the system is not performing well without any tool. Whether you are aware of this particular process, I'm asking you. In case no security solutions or tools are available, so how can you identify the solutions, guys? How can we you identify the alerts? Identify. Exactly. We can't identify. Someone has to report us. Someone means here employee. My system is hanging. My system is doing automatic restarts. My system is completely performance dead slow. My system is completely shut down every time. Someone has to report us. If someone has to report us, then only I will go and I will check his system. Otherwise, it's impossible. It's a manual process. So that is what. So in case he is expecting greenfield site, this is the manual process. If any of the end user is reporting to security team, so before contacting the security team, they will contact help desk team, guys. I told you we will discuss manual malware analysis. Did you remember without any tools? Did you remember? Yes, yeah, you told yeah. me. Yeah. So without any antivirus or ED or any other SIM tools, how can you do manual malware analysis? It's very difficult. In this scenario, someone has to report us. When you say someone, end user or employee. So stating that so and so, okay, so my system is re uh, automatic restarts or shutdowns or maybe hanging and performance issues, bandwidth utilization, it's a dead slow and so on. So once they are reporting, normally they will report to corporate 
IT team, our help desk team, our service desk team. We validate from their side what is the RAM utilization. What is the RAM, first of all, whether it is 4 GB or 8 GB? What is causing so much of spike? Then they will say, from my side, there is nothing. So everything is perfect, all right. Then they will forward to SOC team. Then SOC team, they have to think about security point of view. Whether end user system is got compromised. Okay. So now we have to go to task manager. We have to go to the sys monitor open source tools. Sys monitor also called as sys monitor also called as sys monitor also called as one more another name sys internal sys monitor also called as I, uh, I, I Microsoft have, tool yeah yeah I, yeah yes what is that process monitor process explorer process yeah. So this one, second one we discuss. Okay. So if you don't get these type of questions perfectly, what they're expecting, you can ask back. Are expecting manual malware analysis? Are expecting without any tools? How can you do the analysis? And so on. Okay. Second one is not clear that much. So in if I'm the in, I'm attending the interview, I'll ask back to the interviewer. So are you expecting? So in, in polite manner, not like are you expecting? Could you please confirm? So I did not get the proper question. Could you please repeat? So then he will, in, he will explain the different way. Is it clear or not? That's what I said morning also. Every time inter is not always correct. Maybe he will also ask wrong. Okay. So third one, how many instances do you receive shift wise in that how many are true positive? How many are false positive? If it's a false positive, what fine tuning will you do? Okay, so this is process based question, not technical questions, guys. Process based shift handover separate topic is there. There I'm going to discuss about all these questions. Shift handover. So example, Australia shift you can consider. It will start early morning, five o'clock. So five to two is one shift, two to nine is one shift, nine to early morning, five o'clock, one shift, total three shifts, 24 bar seven into 365 days. So coming back first question, how many instances do you receive shift wise? Okay, so example, you can say 100 instances. 100 instances. So for each shift, we have five L1 team, five L1 team. So L15 on the first shift, L15 on the second shift, L15 on the third shift. All together, how many? How many? 15, 15, L1. 15 L1. So each shift, you can say L2, two members. Two, 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 six. And L1 is one, 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 one. Total enter, we have 25 members team is there. So it's a very big team. So better you can say 15 members team. 15 members team. Okay. Each one is three on L1. Each two is L, L2. And L1 is one. And finally, SOC manager. So that count I will give you guys. Don't worry. Per day, you can say 100 incidents. Out of 100 incidents, 90 incident, 98 incidents are false positive. Two incidents, two incidents are true positives. I told you several times also, most of the incidents are false positives only. Okay. With player case, we'll receive true positive. So I will give a couple of people names and contacts also. You can speak with them. Even though they are working from past two years, they are not even did one true positive scenario also. Okay. If it's a pulse positive, what fine tuning will you do? So, because this is SM and 10 years experience he has put, so that's why he's expecting fine tuning as well. Fine tuning will be done by L3 guys. Fine tuning even implementation to team. Reducing the pulse positive based on the historical approach, based on the historical analysis. Historical analysis. So, if we're coming in this way, so what exactly we are following the process? Okay. So we have to think about first historical incidents, whatever we have done. So after completing all those incidents, if it is repeating, we can ignore those incidents. So that pattern we have to understand. So nothing but first, first one year data we have to identify. 
how many brute force attack has received? How many times true positive? How many times false positive? How many malwares are received? How many true positive? How many false positive? Historical analysis we have to do. When you say historical fast data, we have to gather all those fast data. Okay. So if you are receiving all those fast data, even in future it will repeat. So example, maybe 100 brute force attack has come. All those 100 brute force set, not 100, you can say maybe 10,000 incidents. All those 10,000 incidents completely false positive. In future, anything, if it is coming as a brute force attack, we have to probability wise we suspect that is a false positive. So for this one, so we have to, what is the answer we have to give? So based on the historical analysis, based on the past data, I can do the fine tuning. Then I can make a summary. That is the answer. Okay. Passive monitoring and also historical data. So next one. In case if you want to create any Python or PowerShell script, that is also we have to use by contacting with the vendor. So why by contacting yeah, some internet issues case. So if you're okay in this scenario, so every time we are receiving the false positives in one year time period, we did not receive not in not even one true positive. So then we have already we are paying money to the vendor. So whether all this sim tool is working functionality wise correctly or not. So we have to coordinate with the vendor as well. Okay. So these are the things I will take care. Historical data along with the vendor coordination. Next one. Have you ever integrated SOAR into IBM Q radar? What is the process? Also, what is the virtual function of the SOAR? So which, which integration method we have to use to integrate IBM Q radar to SOAR? Uh, which SOAR is a server right, method. Sir. Yes. Now so it is not server. It is, we can say it is uh, one of the networking device. Then syslog method. Yeah, most of the cases syslog. If it is server collector agent, you are right. So in most of the cases syslog, you can give the answer syslog. No, sir. My question is, SOAR will be hardware, right? Yeah, SOAR will be most of the case hardware. Yes, correct. Hardware, which will be having individual device. Correct. Which works as a server, right? Yeah, it's work as a dedicated network device. We can network device. Okay, which will be connected yeah. to firewall. Okay. Right. Okay, okay, sir. What is the process and also what is the work functionality of the SOAR? What is the functionality of the SOAR? Morning also we discussed. It blocks all the mm -hmm. common log sources. Yeah, first of all, whenever any okay. alert will come, it will give the okay different types of samples of all the log sources, common samples of the log sources information. Example, consider DOS and DDoS attack. What are the possible log sources for DOS and DDoS? What are the possible anti, logs for DOS and DDoS? Anti-DDoS, anti-DDoS. Anti 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 Firewall. Firewall. IDS, IPS. IDS, IPS. WAF also. WAF. Server also. All those, okay, similar type of log source information, it will show on the short tool. Now, even we can go and we can identify the response as well. There is no need to go to the, okay, so blocking of IP address in the firewall. So directly we will block the IP address in this or tool itself. That replication will go to back and firewall now. Okay. So that functionality, everything we can do in this or itself. In such a way, all those tools we will integrate it to SOAR. Okay. So you can go and you can read the SOAR concept, I told you already. So it will provide a similar type of log source as an automated response. When you say automated response, blocking also we can do. Example, IP address blocking, hash value blocking, domain blocking, URL blocking, we can do the SOAR itself. There is no need to go to the separate team to raise a ticket. Example, firewall team, EDR team. Okay, so proxy team or DNS team or SMTP server team and so on. So automated response, we can do here itself. That is the function of the SOAR. So next one. Well, what is notable? Notable, see how work done Splunk. Splunk. What is notable here? Which concept Splunk. is this one? Anyone? Notable, notable, notable. Architecture. Splunk architecture. 
no 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 wrong exam we must be discuss this sorry sir your voice is not clear exam we must be discussed exam beam splunk hello can i audible hello yes sir yeah so tell me tell what notable see how work done splunk so this one we discussed a part of ibm q radar logarithm exa beam it is one of the licensing feature also uba guys uba user entity b analytics uba did you remember hello your voice is breaking sir one second hello am i audible yes sir yes sir yes sir hello am i audible yes sir yes sir yes so some network issues case apologies okay so tell me uh, tell what notables you have worked on spunk it is indirectly they are expecting about so uba concept notable users notable assets notable users are notable assets so meaning here what our instance we are receiving based on the so behavioral based machine learning capability data analytics capability hello yeah 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 we are clear okay so this is about not oba guys this entity behavior analytics so notable users notable assets i have shown one of the practical screenshot related to exa beam did you remember so splunk also same as it is so whatever greater than 90 score it is coming so notable users notable assets meaning here so that score is crossing greater than 90 in exa beam we have to work if it is splunk 0 to 100 score so example so on so user is doing some of the first time abnormal activity or first time activity alert will receive once that alert is received as a l1 l2 l3 team will go and we will take care of the so whether it is a false positive or true positive whether it is legitimate or illegitimate so what the answer you have to say yes i worked on the notable users and notable assets it is related to uba concept in splunk is it clear okay yeah so indirectly this is oba fifth one is oba user entity behavior analytics so this is uh, entry level role so that's why they are expecting most of the cases soar threat hunting oba and so on next one you are taking the backups and queue radar what type of backup types do you take is it configuration backup or data backup or what is the frequency what the answer we take backup sir we will take backup what is the backup we will take yesterday we discussed i told you so regularly we have to take the backup at the time ransomware attack we take the backups of data yes uh, configuration also configuration also both that is yeah, data is frequency and... yes yeah. frequency that is uh, initially will collect it later will start taking the device daily backup we have to say daily backup midnight at 12 o'clock i will take the configuration backup and data backup you said some process as they were for what it's not that is like initially yeah so that is uh, different mm. so at the time of installing the device we will take the enter backup after that daily basis we can the incremental backup 
backup. Yeah, yeah. Incremental backup. I told you, right? Incremental backup. Yes. So what is the frequency? Frequencies daily basis will take the incremental backup related to data and configuration backup both. Is clear? Okay, that is our fifth one, guys. So frequency meaning here. Don't think like a frequency in gigahertz or megahertz. So, so what is the okay? Uh, whether we will take daily or weekly or monthly and so on. So that is called frequency. Next one. When authentication failure is done in internal, before contacting them, what are all the basic steps you check? Sorry. When authentication failures is done in internal, okay. Before contacting them, what are the basic steps you check? So, what is mean by this one? Before contacting the end user, whenever any internal brute force attack is happening, what will you do? That is the question, guys. What are the information you will validate? Did you get the question or not? First of all, sixth one. Yes, we will add it first initially the IP address is already saying it is internal. Mm. So we will validate. So how many times so that activity it's happened. So from the internal users itself it is received or any spoofed IP address this one is happened. So okay, all those logs we will analyze. Still in case if you don't get the full fledged information. So first I will go and I will see what is the victim IP of the end user machine, what is the username and which location he is trying to access. Okay, from single username this attack is happened. So all those things I will do the analysis. What are alert is giving and still if I am not able to get the full fledged information, then only I will contact the end user. Okay, Sir? yes, please. Uh, in case if it is you mean to say that even that internal IP address better we need to check whether it is spoofed or original, right? Yes, it is. So then in virus total, if I upload the things, it, can we check it out? No, no, no. Internal IP, it? no, we can't check it. Deep yeah. packet inspection, firewall Deep logs, we have to see. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So first thing is what, what we have to analyze, what are alert we received. So through which IP that particular, okay, so brute force attack has happened. Okay, so take that IP and go to even firewall logs as well. You can see is there any spoofed IP address is available by doing the filtering of the respect to internal IP under the log and report tab or forwarded traffic tab option. Okay, from which source IP this particular so login attempt it is happened. So we can see that information. So from external IP spoofed IP this particular login authentication it has happened on behalf of the end user or maybe internal user itself he has done okay so that basic ip spoofing thing we have to verify guys ip spoofing part okay so firewall plus so domain control logs and also alert related logs next one what does it mean by status code 2 200 200 success what is basically what is expecting they are expecting HTTP status codes yes HTTP status codes guys HTTPS authentication code status codes 200 is belongs to success success authentication succeeded or uh, success yes okay that's correct next one have you this is one of the favorite topic the especially for Deloitte the written test have you ever prepared SOPs if yes, what you prepared and give one examples of which SOP you have written. So nothing but whether do you have playbooks creation or run books creation or maybe SOPs creation, standard operating process documents. What is the answer you will give? Will you, did you create or not? Yes or no? Yes. Yes. So give any of the attack. Excel brute force attack you can say. So L1 team what he has to do? L2 team what he has to do, L3 team what he has to do, everything we have to provide you one of the what document that is called SOP guys. Take any of the, of the example, what are 10 attacks we discussed, one attack you can explain. So I created the, so example brute force attack. 
So L1 team has to do this one, L2 team has to do this one, L3 team has to do this one. And also I attach one of the SOP in the even uh, material also. Please go through that one also once. So starting with the other notification to till closure of the instant. Everything we have to. So right. So mainly this one L3 level role. Once again, creating the SOPs, who will do L3, L3. Next one. As you said that you speak with the client, what actually do you speak with the clients in meetings? Anyone? So ninth one, as you said that you speak with the client, what actually do you speak with the clients in meetings? Yeah, if uh, uh, end user or server is got compromised, uh, we will speak uh, about that uh, with client. Root cause analysis, sir. Only root cause analysis? No, initially, this is one meeting we take. Whenever we prepare a root cause mm. analysis, we yes. have a meeting mm. with our manager first. Mm. Later, we have some meetings with the clients to analysis it, find us to take the decision on that. Yeah. So we will attend. So I used to attend multiple team meetings with the clients. So one thing is related to whenever any true pass to something is got compromised, I'll prepare the root cause analysis document and we'll discuss with the client. That is one of the scenario. Second scenario, weekly day, weekly report, daily report, monthly report, we will prepare and we will generate those reports analysis also we will discuss. How many instances are open? How many instances are closed? How many instances? Okay, so pending or on hold, how many are work in progress? That is the second scenario. Third scenario is related to whenever any new log sources, if you want to onboard, we will gather the requirement from the client or customer. Okay, so what are newly onboarded log sources are there? Those log source information will gather and we will onboard new log sources as well in the same tool. Okay, these are the couple of scenarios, guys. Okay, understood or not? So these are the couple of scenarios. So this is process oriented question, second one. So report generation. So that one I will discuss part of process oriented questions. Shift handover, process oriented. So what, what are the reports we will generate? There are two different types of reports we will generate. One is process oriented reports. One is the technical reports. When you say technical reports, so nothing but oh, firewall no. denied activity. EDR allowed activity, compromise scenario activities, all those are technical related. So non-technical or functional or process oriented reports are, so total quantity wise, how many are open, how many are closed, how many are work in progress. So even dashboards creation as well, that is process oriented. For all those different scenarios, I will schedule a call with the okay client or customer, then we can discuss about all these meetings. So root cause analysis, one of the scenario, onboarding new logs, this is gathering the requirement from the, so I mean client or customer. Third one is report submission, report generation, creating new dashboards, creating new reports. For all these different types of scenarios, I'll schedule a call with the client and customer and we'll discuss all those scenarios. Is it clear or not? Yes, sir. Not only just on the just only instant investigations wise. So design wise, implementations wise, reports wise, everything total end to end SOC operations wise, we'll discuss with the customer guys. Okay, next one. Explain how the instant response works from the triggering to close. Take one example and explain. Indirectly what they're asking? The process, the from log sources to console and so, later closing. Yes, instant life cycle management process. So logical flow, alert, alert, alert notification, after receiving the alert notification till even closer also. So what are we discussed, right? So starting with the log sources to the alert notification and after that instant life cycle management process also. We discussed 10 for every attack, same process. Is it clear or not? 10th one. 10th yeah. one clear or not? We have to explain any one incident solution, right? Yes, correct. Take any one scenario with log sources to till closer. Take pulse pass to also fine. A true pass to also fine. Yeah. Indirectly, they are expecting. Can you explain one of the incident, guys? 
and which process you will follow preparation identification containment eradication recovery lessons learned that process also enter IR, IR means incident response. Not only pulse positive, even you had explained true positive also. Incident response. Sir, okay. Yes, please. In the, I mean, in the same interview, uh, can we expect repeated questions? Like if you, uh, ten, if you see 10th question, they're asking about the incident response. Like that, mm -hmm. uh, can we uh, expect repeated questions like that? Uh, your, so voice. your voice is breaking and chopping. Hello. My, my hello. Yes. I am not sure whether it is from my side or your side, but unfortunately, your voice is breaking. No, no. From his side, it is very clear, sir. We have an issue with your networking. Okay. From my side only, I think. Yeah. From my side only, I think. Yeah. Okay. So could you please repeat once again? Uh, in the uh, in the interview, can we expect the uh, repeated questions? Sir? Yes, we can because see tenth one you can see example they are expecting not only about okay any instant even whether you are aware of instant life cycle management process or not comparison with instant investigation along with which process you are following. Okay, that is a yes. So coming back to your question, yes. So couple of times. Duplicated questions, it will come. Yeah. Okay, sir. So, 11th one, how do you isolate this server when it is getting compromised? We discussed already. What will you do? do. How can you do the thing. containment? Yeah. So, contact the server owner or asset owner and discuss about the business impact analysis and go to EDR tool and isolate the network device after analyzing the business impact analysis. Okay, so business also you have to say guys, here they are expecting a server, not end user system. So I will contact the server owner or asset owner or business owner and they will, I will analyze the business impact analysis. How much outage limited issues are there? Later I will go to the EDR tool and you will do the containment. Okay. So that is about 11th one. What do you, what do you about master node in Splunk where we store the master node buckets? Okay. So master node is nothing but our main ESM tool or Splunk tool. Okay, slave node is nothing but our backup. So master clusters, master clusters meaning a primary and backup guys, primary and backup. Okay, so here, what do you what do you know about master node in Splunk? Master node is nothing but our primary ESM tool. What are we are doing about the instant investigation or user controller SM tool? Okay, so what is that one in call it in Splunk terminology? Master node, or else what is we can call it as? What is the SM tool in Splunk? Splunk tool only, search heads. Search heads, that's correct. Search heads, another name is called master node, guys. Master node. Okay. So master clusters mean high availability. It's coming back now. So that is the first one. What do you know about master node in Splunk is nothing but it is a sim tool. It is equivalent to search heads. It is like a sim tool or graphical user interface or user console where we are doing the instant investigations. Okay, second one, where we store the master node buckets. So obviously in the main, okay, it sets heads itself. So in the main Splunk tool itself, we will store the buckets. These are all like a storage purpose. Bucket is a storage in Splunk tool. Bucket, S3 bucket, it's a cloud tool. Node we discussed, did you remember node? Node, yes. did you remember yes. node? I, I in Exabeam tool. Yeah. Even in examining the processor, IBM also, and also second one is uh, uh, exam. Yeah, processor. So even it will act as a storage also. 
okay same thing so node we can where we can okay so store where we so we search indexers search indexers search heads and search indexers second answer search indexers or search heads both both okay coming back second answer is heads and search indexers or otherwise search processor or data processor third one i mean sorry 13th one what kind of data you need in that so this one i did not tell you normally in the linux server logs will be stored in one second so in the linux side so logs path so in windows side sorry guys it's unstable internet connectivity today apologies hello am i audible yes sir yeah so this yeah this is the last question i'm going to discuss after that we can we can stop because internet issues are there okay so what is the last question 13th one sorry 13th one can you tell me where we are onboarding linux os what kind of data you need in that okay windows server where we we'll, what are the different types of logs we can store windows server audit windows logs. server audit logs Uh, system logs. System, okay, system application logs. logs. Application logs. Yeah, system logs. Yeah, next one. Audit application system forwarded events. What else? Error logs. Hello. Are we audible? Yes, yes. Yeah, last one. Audit application system forwarded and last one. Hello. Hello. Yes. We'll continue tomorrow, guys. I think some internet issues are there from my side. We'll continue tomorrow. Is that be okay? Okay, sir. Please upload the videos. Yeah, so we'll continue tomorrow, guys. Yeah, that will be better, sir. Yeah, that's fine. Some unstable internet connectivity, guys. Apologies for that. No issues. No, this is not an issue. Yeah. So we'll see you tomorrow at eight o'clock. Thank you so much, guys. Good night. Thank you sir good night sir thanks good night